Hey guys, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks and today I want to talk to you about the four ways to stop your bird from biting. Uh, some of these might seem obvious, some of these might seem not so obvious to you guys. So let's get to the video. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comments about which of my top four ways to stop biting resonates the most with you that you either apply already or that you started applying after hearing in this video. So make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this content and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy more content like this. So you guys might hear my birds in the background of this video. I'm actually in the garden where I have four of my bird aviaries. I'll show them to you real quick. Uh, so I have my Toko Toucan here, my Congo African Grey, my Galah Cockatoo, and my three Sun Conyers. So they are actually incredibly quiet right now because they just had a huge fly all around the property and got a lot of their energy out. So now they're just making grumbly, like very happy content noises. It's adorable. So <laughs> I tried to frame a shot where you guys could actually see the aviaries in the background the whole time, but it was very backlit, so I figured not so much. Uh, but I did try, so I'll make sure that I get lots of cute footage of my birds into this video for you guys, since I'm not having a bird on me right now. So the number one way to stop your parrot's biting is to figure out what situations you get yourself in that your parrot is most likely to bite you and avoiding getting in those situations. Because the more your bird feels like it has to bite you to communicate what it does or doesn't want, uh, the more your relationship is gonna kind of backpedal and go downhill. So we wanna avoid the bite in the first place. If you know that 95% of the time that you go to get your bird out of the cage, it's going to bite you, you gotta back up, avoid that situation and figure out how else can you get the bird out of the cage without getting bit? Can you use target training or stationing or even uh, flight training to be able to get your bird to go from spot to spot? How can you get your bird out of that situation uh, in a different way that leads to a non-bite? So avoiding the bite is number one and is very paramount for saving your relationship with your bird. All right, my second tip for stopping biting is to ABC it. Now we talk about our ABCs in my Family Friendly Parrot Formula Volume 1 and 2. And what this means is figuring out what happens before and after you get bit. Because more than likely there's a pattern in your behavior that your bird is picking up on. Do you put the bird in the cage as punishment or as a timeout every time the bird bites you? Then your bird might be interpreting that as communicating, hey, every time I bite the human, I get to go back in my cage. So it may not be seeing that as punishment. It may be hungry or thirsty or want to play with toys or just want to be in its safe space um, from hanging out with you. It might just be tired of hanging out with you and that's its signal for wanting to go back. So there's a lot of patterns that happen in our behavior that influence our bird's behavior. And the sooner you pick up on that and spot that pattern through charting your ABCs or journaling about it, um, the quicker you'll be able to reverse that pattern. So third is a hard one. I feel like this is the most tricky and this is one that I always mention in our master classes because a lot of master classes are hosted by veterinarian offices or parrot rescues, um, things of that nature where there are birds in the facility. And uh, one of the things that I find is that everybody notices the really annoying bird. It's hard not to notice the screaming cockatoo in the corner, um, but nobody notices the quiet bird in the corner, nobody pays any attention. And it's those moments where your bird is being good, your bird is being quiet, your bird is being cute, your bird is self-entertaining, that you need to remember to reward those awesome behaviors. And a lot of us just tend to forget and take those moments for granted. But you've gotta find a way to remember and reward. Maybe put a timer on your watch or put reminders and sticky notes around your house. Just anytime your bird is being awesomely itself, uh, go ahead and go drop a treat over there or give it a little scratch on the head if that's what it likes. Whatever reinforcement it likes as a reward, do that. Do more of that and remember to reward your bird for the behaviors that tend to go unnoticed that are really good behaviors. 
Another way to stay on top of that tip is to keep little various treats around the house and even clickers. Uh, I sell my clickers in packs of three for this purpose alone or more if you really want a ton of clickers, which I keep them everywhere. But I like having clickers all around the house so that anytime your bird is being good and awesome, you have a clicker really close by with a little treat thing and you can just click and go over and drop a treat in the dish for your bird. So that's one of my tips and tricks for staying on top of that really good behavior that you don't always expect or don't always know is coming. Okay, and number four, I'm so guilty of this one. <laughs> so I'm guilty recently of this one. Um, this one is about not sabotaging yourself and your bird by rewarding the not good behaviors. And these are the behaviors that are disguised as cute that are not good for your overall long-term relationship. Uh, so these are any sort of heightened behaviors. You know, I remember, oh gosh, where were we? And somebody was like, oh, the bird, oh, oh, it was my bird. Okay, so I had um, a friend of mine working on my aviaries and my son Conyers were not happy about it and they were all puffed up and they were doing, if you guys have sun conures, you know where they get puffed and they just start doing this like, I could be big dance. Um, that's what my conures were doing. And Kyle, my friend was like, oh, it's so cute. They're dancing. And I was like, oh Lord, <laughs> that's not a good dance if it's a dance at all. But I was just like, uh, yeah, it's what they do when they're sacrificing. It's a sacrificial ritual dance because I was just laughing at the fact that like he, they wanted to attack him and get him. And he's over there like, that's adorable. Uh, it wasn't adorable. So remembering that certain behaviors that even though they make us laugh or smile or whatever, remembering that those might be at a heightened state and making sure not to reward your bird at that emotionally heightened state because Anytime you train a behavior, you're also capturing with that behavior, you're capturing the emotional state your bird is in. So if every time it talks, it's super heightened, jinx, uh, then you're actually capturing this aggressive heightened behavior. And although you may not notice it because the bird's not that way to you when you're training it, you will notice it when your bird is that way to everybody else. Oh, sorry guys, the camera was having, camera is having a hard time focusing on me. Um, there's like a glare in the sun that's just hitting me just right. Uh, anyways, so I hope that resonates with you guys. Just be really careful and mindful because some of those cute behaviors are really not cute long term. So, uh, yeah. And then I just realized um, that I think I have five <laughs> tips instead of four. I said four in the beginning. That's why I don't like intros. <laughs> so my fifth tip, which is kind of like a bonus extra tip anyway, is just that... When you're getting bit a ton by your bird, oh my gosh, camera, come on, you can do it, seriously. Um, keep in mind that it could go back to health or a medical reason. So if your bird is not feeling well, it's not gonna be in a good mood, it's not gonna act well, it's most likely gonna tell you through biting. Um, so just make sure that your baseline foundation of your bird's health is really in check from the diet to how much sleep it's getting to its environment, making sure that you don't have any accidental household toxins in your home where you have air fresheners or perfumes or you know what have you, especially aerosols, anything that can be dispersed into the air and that they're inhaling, That's they're just so, so so sensitive to that with their respiratory systems. So just making sure that your bird's health is, uh, your bird is actually healthy, is huge in making sure that you're not getting bit because it would be awful to think that it's all behavioral and be working on training and fixing your relationship when there's actually an underlying health condition. So just make sure that if it seems like you cannot get to the root of it and your bird is showing any other symptoms of being sick or you have just never taken your bird to a vet and never got an, a well bird exam, that you go ahead and do that just for the peace of mind of knowing that your bird is um, healthy and okay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and got some help out of it with you and your bird. If you ever are in need of one-on-one -on -one help, you're just having a hard time self-analyzing or diagnosing what's going on with your bird, sometimes it just takes an outside eye, and that's why my husband and I offer online consultations through Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, phone, WhatsApp, all the things, though we really, really prefer Zoom, uh, but we can offer you online consultations. So go ahead and head over to my website, birdtricks.com, and under the About Us tab, we have consultation packages that you can get, whether you're looking for a one-off or a multiple consult package, which is what I really recommend, because sometimes when people do a one-off consult, they don't feel any sort of accountability for following through with the advice that they get. So I like being able to follow up with you guys and seeing what works 
worked, maybe what didn't work and what we can change or modify going forward. Or maybe everything was awesome and you're ready for the next step. I really like seeing that all the way through. So make sure that if you are having a hard time figuring out why your bird is biting, that you either start with my beginner course, which is on my website, um, or you just book a consultation, in which case you'll get parts of my beginner course with that. Thanks for watching guys. Talk to you soon. Just found a Rocco feather. Is this yours? This is your feather. Where's your feather in the camp? I promised you guys some cute footage of everybody. You're delivering, Rocco. Look at the eye closed. The other one's open now. That one's open. That one's open. Love you.